Interdisciplinary thinking. Sometimes by taking my brain into places where it hasn't been before, I can have intellectual revelations. And I know there are many people who do the same. For example, when I worked at NASA, I discovered there were so many people on the lab who were also musicians, part-time actors, resolute golfers, sports addicts, foodies and chefs, and more. They enjoyed being creative, and they enjoyed immersing themselves in a world that was outside of their occupation. Through these creative outlets, they could find a new focus and make new discoveries within their work in science. And that was so inspiring to be around. And so, reminiscing about NASA led me to create this specific podcast about someone in history who was an exceptional interdisciplinary thinker. The history of math is our intellectual foundation for understanding science. Science. Beautiful, remarkable, awe-inspiring science. It's the creative foundation for our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math, Science, History. In the year 415, the infamous philosopher and mathematician Hypatia of Alexandria, Egypt, was savagely murdered by church monks. This murder shocked the Roman community and its government leaders. Hypatia was known far and wide as a respected philosopher, mathematician, government advisor, and a professor. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, is a book that I wrote that looks not just at the circumstances surrounding her death, but also at the sum of her entire life. I weave in the details of her education, disciples, Neoplatonic philosophies, female contemporaries, and the many mathematics that she wrote and taught about. There is truly more to Hypatia's life than her death. Hypatia, The Sum of Her Life, written by me, Gabrielle Burchak, is now on sale on Amazon. Buy your copy today. The study of conics began in the 4th century BCE. I note Hypatia's work on conics in my book, and it's a fascinating subject that lends itself to further understanding algebra and geometry. And its contribution to algebra can be seen through the brilliant work of the Persian mathematician Omar Khayyam. But he was more than just a mathematician. Like Hypatia, he was also an astronomer, a philosopher, and a political advisor. Furthermore, he was not just analytical. He was also highly creative and wrote beautiful poetry. Omar Khayyam was born on May 18th, 1048 in Nishapur, a city in northeastern Iran. Nishapur was a cultural and intellectual hub during Khayyam's time, providing a rich environment for his education and intellectual growth. Khayyam showed an early aptitude for mathematics and science, which set the stage for his later achievements. Khayyam's most significant contributions to mathematics lie in his work on algebra. His pivotal book, Treatise on Demonstration of Problems of Algebra was a landmark text that systematically presented methods for solving cubic equations. Khayyam employed geometric methods. Unlike his predecessors who approached cubic equations algebraically, he used the intersection of conic sections, including parabolas, hyperbolas, and circles to find solutions to algebraic equations. In the 11th century, this was an innovative approach ahead of its time. His methodologies laid the groundwork for future developments in algebra and geometry. For example, Khayyam tackled cubic equations of the form x cubed plus ax equals b, and he demonstrated that one could find the roots of the cubic equation by intersecting a parabola with a circle. This revolutionary method illustrated Khayyam's deep understanding of algebra and geometry. Before Khayyam, solutions to cubic equations were largely unknown. 
Mathematicians had developed methods for solving linear equations, quadratic equations, and equations with exponents divisible by 2. However, it was still difficult to find general solutions to cubic equations and those equations with exponents divisible by 3. He worked with a few methodologies, some of which include the reduction to a standard form. Kayam reduced the general cubic equation to simpler forms he could manage with geometric techniques. For instance, he would change the variables of equations to eliminate the quadratic term if it was present. Another methodology that he used included translating algebraic problems into geometric ones. By looking at the geometry of the equations, like parabolas and circles, he could better understand the algebra behind the geometry. This leads us to his third methodology, which was evaluating algebra through the intersection of conics. He realized that the solutions to cubic equations could be found by considering the points of intersection between certain conic sections, such as the intersection between a circle and a parabola. By finding the points where the two curves intersect, he obtained the solutions to the cubic equation, and this was considered groundbreaking for his time. I will post some equations on my website at mathsciencehistory.com. And hey, while you're there, please feel free to click on that coffee button because every cup of coffee that you purchase, and it doesn't have to be a big cup of coffee, but every cup of coffee that you buy helps to pay for this podcast. Kayam was a mathematician whose work exceeded the brilliance of his peers. In addition to his work with cubic equations, he also contributed to the understanding of the binomial theorem and the concept of combinatorics, which are foundational to modern algebra. His methods and ideas influenced later mathematicians in both the Islamic world and in Europe, cementing his place in the history of mathematics. In addition to his work with mathematics, he did significant work on calendar reform. Over the past 2,000 years, if not more, there have been various calendar reforms. I discussed this in my Season 1 podcast about leap year. In 46 BCE, Julius Caesar and his brilliant sidekick, Sosigenes, realized a three-year month seasonal discrepancy in their calendar. And so, he commissioned Sosigenes to develop the Julian calendar. In the same podcast, I also mentioned the Gregorian calendar and how that was implemented by Pope Gregory in October of 1582. However, in that podcast, I failed to mention the developments made in Persia and Iran on the calendar reform implemented by Sultan Malik Shah I of the Seljuk Empire. 500 years earlier than the Gregorian calendar, in 1074, the Sultan invited Kayyam to Isfahan to reform the calendar. The goal was to create a more accurate calendar to better predict the solar year and to improve agricultural planning. Kayyam, along with a team of astronomers, developed the Jalali calendar. The Jalali calendar, introduced in 1079, was remarkably precise. It calculated the length of the year as 365.2421985815 days, which is only slightly different from the modern value of 365.242190 days that we now have in our calendars. This level of accuracy was unmatched at the time and remained so until the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in 1582. The Jalali calendar's precision stemmed from Kayyam's deep understanding of astronomy and his meticulous observational methods. He and his team extensively used observational data to refine their calculations, ensuring the calendar's accuracy over extended periods. The Jalali calendar is still used in Iran today, and this is a testament to Kayyam's enduring legacy. He was a brilliant individual. Kayyam's contributions were not limited to mathematics and astronomy. He was also deeply involved in the political life of his time. He served as an advisor to Sultan Malik Shah I and later to his successor, Sultan Sanjar. His role as a court advisor allowed him to influence decisions on various matters, including scientific and educational policies. Despite his involvement in politics, Kayyam remained dedicated to his intellectual pursuits. He navigated the complexities of court life while continuing his research and writing. This dual role as a scholar and political advisor highlights Kayyam's versatility and ability to thrive in different spheres. In addition to his mathematical and political contributions, Kayyam is also known in the West for his poetry. 
His collection of quatrains, known as the Rubaiyat, has been translated into many languages and continues to captivate readers with its themes of love, mortality, and the pursuit of knowledge. Here's an excerpt from one of his most famous quatrains, translated by the historian Edward Fitzgerald. The moving finger writes, and, having writ, moves on, nor all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash out a word of it. These lines reflect Kayam's philosophical outlook on life and the inevitable passage of time. His poetry often contemplates the transient nature of existence and the importance of living in the moment. The Rubaiyat's themes resonate with readers across cultures and eras, highlighting Kayam's universal appeal. Kayam's work in mathematics, astronomy, and poetry intersected in fascinating ways. His mathematical precision informed his astronomical observations, which in turn influenced his philosophical musings in poetry. This interplay of disciplines is a hallmark of Kayam's genius and underscores his comprehensive approach to knowledge. And to this day, his contributions still inspire so many people around the world. Kayam's contributions to mathematics and astronomy were groundbreaking, yet he remained humble and dedicated to the pursuit of truth. His ability to bridge different fields of study and his profound insights into the human condition make him a timeless figure in the history of math, science, and literature. Omar Khayyam was a polymath whose work transcended the boundaries of mathematics, astronomy, and poetry. His solutions to cubic equations and his calendar reform were pioneering achievements that left an indelible mark on the history of science. His poetry, with its philosophical depth and lyrical beauty, continues to inspire readers worldwide. Kayam's legacy is a testament to the power of interdisciplinary thinking and the enduring quest for knowledge. He reminds us that the pursuit of truth through mathematics, astronomy, or poetry is a universal endeavor that transcends time and place. Thank you for joining me at Math Science History. Please remember to subscribe to the show. Also, if you could please leave a rating or a review, it would be really appreciated. Because those ratings and reviews really do help to increase my listenership, which help to get me more sponsors, which help me keep the podcast up and running. If you want to learn more about the history of math and science, please visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. If you like what you're listening to, and if you like what you're reading, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Every cup of coffee that you buy helps me pay for the expenses that go into making this podcast. Also, if you're interested in leaving me a comment or chatting with me, you can always find me on your preferred social media platform, including X, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Goodreads, TikTok, Threads, etc., etc., etc. Just go to Google and search for Gabrielle Burchak. You can find me everywhere. <laughs> Until next time, carpe diem.